All right, guys, so this is the chemical reactions experiment. With this experiment, what you're going to do is um, observe a series of chemical reactions. And what you're doing every time you observe a chemical reaction is you're looking for a, one or more signs that a chemical reaction has occurred. Those signs are formation of a precipitate. So if you see a solid or if it gets cloudy, that's a, that's a precipitate. You're looking for the evolution of a gas. So if you see bubbles or there's an odor, that's a sign that a chemical reaction has occurred. Color change, if the color changes, chemical reaction has occurred. Um, evolution of heat or absorption of heat, so if it gets colder or hotter, that's a sign. And emission of light, if you see light, we'll see one of those, um, that's another sign that chemical reaction has occurred. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna observe these chemical reactions, write down what you see as your observations, and then you're going to write a balanced chemical equation that describes that reaction. In order to do that, you will have, you will see by each chemical reaction um, a sign that says what the two reactants are in words. In order to write down the balanced chemical equation, what you do is use your nomenclature skills to convert these names into formulas, write down the reactants, figure out what the products are, if any, then balance the equation. Now, I'll tell you up front, there are some of these reactions where nothing happens. If no reaction occurs, then you just write no reaction. You don't have to write down a, a chemical equation for those. All right, so why don't we go ahead and get started? All right, guys, so this is the reaction, if any, between calcium chloride and sodium phosphate. Now, with all these reactions, we're not going to measure anything. We're just, these are all qualitative, so we're just going to put a little bit of each in. I'm going to take a, an empty test tube, small test tube. Add some calcium chloride, just a little bit. Always put the lids back on containers. And we're finished. All right, guys, this is the reaction, if any, between calcium chloride and sodium carbonate. Put the lid back on the container. All right, guys, so this is the reaction, if any, between calcium chloride and sodium nitrate. As always, put the lids back on the containers. No temperature change. All right, guys, so this is the reaction, if any, between sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. As always, put the lids back on the containers. Wow, that's getting hot. All right, guys, this is the reaction, if any, between hydrochloric acid, sodium hydroxide. As always, put the lids back on the containers. Whoa, that's getting hot. All right, guys, so this is the reaction, if any, between hydrochloric acid and zinc, as well as the reaction right after that, where we put a lighted wood splint in there. We watch.
And now this is the next reaction where we take a lighted wood splint and put it in there. All right, guys, so this is the reaction, if any, between sodium carbonate and hydrochloric acid. All right, guys, this is the reaction, if any, when we heat up copper to hydroxide. So with this one, we've got to be careful not to burn ourselves. We're going to use a test tube holder to hold the test tube. I'm going to light the Bunsen burner first. So already set the, I already have the settings adjusted on the Bunsen burner. If not, you want to check that. Turn on the gas. So, put the copper 2 hydroxide in the test tube. Don't need much, just a little bit. So, it's important to see what it looks like before we put it in. And remember, guys, whenever you heat up a test tube or do a reaction in a test tube, you never point it at anybody. There's a, some condensation here. So guys, there's some condensation on the top of the test tube here. That's an important observation. That tells you what one of the products um, is. All right, guys, so this is the reaction, if any, when we heat up copper to sulfate pentahydrate. A really good observation, if you can see it, is there is some condensation around the top of the test tube in this case, too. Um, that's an important observation because it helps you figure out one of, what one of the products is. All right, guys, so this is the reaction, if any, between anhydrous copper 2 sulfate and DI water, deionized water. As always, put the lids back on the containers. That is hot. I mean, it thermally hot. I don't mean, it looks good. It does look good, too. It's kind of hot both ways. All right, guys, so this is the reaction, if any, between copper 2 sulfate and zinc metal.
five minutes later. You see that? All right, guys, so this is the reaction, if any, between zinc sulfate and copper metal. There's no temperature change. It's neither getting colder nor hotter. All right, guys, so this is the reaction, if any, between 3% hydrogen peroxide and potassium iodide. Now, one quick word about this. You will see uh, a color in the solution. That is not what we're looking for. That just ends up being what potassium iodide looks like whenever it's in, in any solution, any water. All right, guys, this is the reaction of ethanol with oxygen, if any. All right, guys, this is the reaction, if any, between strontium hydroxide and ammonium chloride. As always, put the lids back on the containers. This is a pretty cool reaction, if it happens. Um, there's two, two solids. It, it, usually you don't get reactions between two solids without a liquid medium, like water or something, for them to, to react in. As always, put the lids back on the containers. And we're going to give this guy a swirl. I'm going to smell it. Oh, jeez! Um, yeah, there's a smell. Whoa, that is cold. Oh, my hand's freezing. That's, that's cold. 